That's so funny. Every, That's a minute 30 in. I mean, I'll, I'll figure it out at some point. We, we're, we're back to, like, we're back. It's the full Murder Moose squad. Oh, yeah. This, I, 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 I found this Josh guy. He disappeared. And it is good that you are back. Wow. Yeah, I'm. How you doing, brother? I'm very good. Sometimes, well, no, actually, not often, but sometimes I have to, uh, or not have to. Sometimes I fall into deep, dark holes, and I can't find yeah. my way out. And yeah. I found my way out, so I'm here. Well, dude, man, depression is a scary thing, man, and like, especially now. Oh and- wait, did you know? That antidepressants can just randomly say fuck you and stop working too. I didn't know that, but I know that now. And I've switched it up oh. with my doctor. All that. I didn't know that. But apparently they I can just I... be like, yo, what's up? I'm just going to not work anymore. <laughs> and I'm like, huh? Dude, the body is so fucked up. The body is so incredibly fucked up. And the brain especially, man. Like, I, I know I, this that, is like, how I have to talk about it. Very like just whatever it's it is what it is. Yeah. I have depression and I'm working on it and whatever. I mean that's all that matters, man. You're 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 becoming a super Saiyan, Josh, which is all <laughs> you uh, all you ever wanted. And Josh is giving me shit before we started because he wanted to do slacks and I I guess he said I was the one right that told you about that fucking movie. Dick. I know. <laughs> well, the, it wasn't. It wasn't because it. It was on the front page of Shutter. That's why I. I know, uh, but it was on. It. it was on Plex first. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> I, remember, Josh. I don't remember a lot of things, and yeah, I, re, I keep remembering. See, I'm working on that here, too. I smoke way too much, and I'm changing that to. I'm just being a better person because you know what, I want to be. Josh, Josh is like starting his own meditation center where he tells you how to be like whoosha. I love meditation. Whoosha. I lost that I'm, for a long time. Like I seriously was like very the meditation guy for two years with Headspace, yeah. this app that costs money and stuff. And then I was like, you know, yeah. What? Oh, yeah. I don't want to spend the money this year because I, I did it for two years. And as soon as I stopped paying for it and stopped doing it, I – like lost my mind again. I'm like, what the hell? So now I'm back <laughs> with the headspace again. I'm like, okay, I got my head back. Again. <laughs> Dude, I did that thing for a while for the what, like the 60 day trial or some shit. It's so had. good, like, man. The, it's so worth yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. It's something that you have to do. Like, you have to. It's keep thing, on top. Of. Yeah. As soon as you forget, yeah. then it's the benefits are gone again. So like, as soon as it, yeah. like, I just did that first like two days. I was like, oh, then I started to remember again. And I'm like, okay, you know yeah. what? This is a good thing. Yes. And you're a good thing. Um, no, and, and Rod. And it's good to see you. You're a good thing. And this show is a good thing. And it sucks that I had to say, hey, I got to take a pause. But I took a pause from everything, too. Like, I wasn't yeah. on Twitch saying hi to anyone. I wasn't, like, online. I just, like, I unplugged no. and zened out. And I was on my bicycle a lot outside with the kids a lot. And just, like... I don't know, getting back in tune with like life instead of like virtual, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's again, it's the world we live in, right? We're in 2021. So, like, all the normal seas and everything that we had been used to. Not that I, I'm still not sure how much Josh's life has changed since COVID because I well, think I, I feel got like a happy did a- light down in my basement now. So, I'm hoping it acts as the sun. <laughs> For me in this freaking dungeon, so I I just want to see like a horror version of that sun from I I guess I don't even have to say a horror version because it is a horror that the sun from the Teletubbies where it's like the (laughs) sun with the baby, but like like having like like Freddy Krueger in it or some shit like that, and like just like screaming at you to be like Uh, like, that is my basement though. Like you look at all the pictures on my wall, I'm sure. Yeah. I don't know. My my kids have to be desensitized. Well, they are desensitized to all the like the slasher, the the big slasher figures. They they know yeah. them all. Oh, Mike Myers, because I've been him so many times for Halloween and stuff. So <laughs> they're just like, oh yeah, Mike. That's Mike Myers. Or are you sure you weren't dressing up as uh, John Travolta in the Fanatic? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I got. I'm gonna. I have to revisit uh, the movie soon because. Uh, I'm we're I'm going to record with those guys on uh, Friday, and I'm diving into a movie I've never seen before, 
which is Nicolas Cage in uh, Wicker Man. So, oh, dude, gonna... it's so good. <laughs> the bees! They're in my I know. Eyes! I mean, I, I've, seen... <laughs> I've seen. I've <laughs> seen. Fuck. See that? I, uh, by the way, got. That's the like. I got. Uh... See, that's bad. That's just, it's so bad, but it's so weird on top of bad. But like, yep. but that's where I'm like, I, I <laughs> Nicholas Cage, that's where he can go. He can go there. And like, you're, yeah. if you still, you haven't watched that yet? No, okay, no, you're it's, gonna uh, have fun with I'm going to watch. You're going to yeah. have fun with that. Oh, one. I'm, I'm excited because a good, bad movie. Dude, I, I was talking about it, but I, I bought this Blu ray for this, I, like a couple weeks ago at Best Buy. A month ago i picked up like five horror movies and one of them is this castle freaks movie and it was quite possibly one of the worst just like it's bad because it's bad movies ever <laughs> i've like horror movies it, it was there was tentacles coming out of vaginas and attacking people it was just nice. it was it was a nightmare it was a nightmare it was not and it wasn't a nightmare in a you know entertaining way um yeah so that was <laughs> that was the thing I, I watched that and i watched soul what the hell was that called soul where the guy is like or he's like cursed or some shit but yeah so i was like soul the pixar movie that one's hard not nah, maybe i forget what the fuck it's and called, depressing just... all at the same time but the, all pixar movies are right they teach you a lesson about how your life is just <sighs> shit and that you have to get your shit together, and then you cry for like five minutes, and then you realize, it, oh, everything's good, right? Is isn't the point of childhood is that you don't know the world sucks? It's like until you have to All start Pixar like you know, paying the bills. Super like <laughs> depressing, but like unbelievable too. Like super yeah. like well done. I, the best film like storytelling is Pixar movies. I sure. I still think it's hysterical that like horror movies are like you know people like light up their torches and get their pitchforks and come after them because they're the violence but man i i don't i think some of my most traumatic experiences in movies have been like pixar movies and <laughs> shit like that yeah. so i mean it's like the first 10 minutes of up is like one of the most horrifyingly sad openers to a movie like it it of all time. Yep. It's a short film that literally, if you aren't sobbing, you have no soul. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's definitely. I, I saw it in the so. theaters and was like, why? But why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> dude, dude, that and Coco. Coco hit me oh, yeah, hard when I really watched that one, one, man. I love uh, I, I've seen them all, and I've seen them all too many times now, and I can quote yeah. Moana like every song we can sing now like just as much as all the frozen movies and stuff but i get i need to start listening to the shiny song some more because i get the i'm shiny part stuck in my head <laughs> and I'll, I'll just walk around and go i'm shiny because like you don't know the i don't actually know the words i'm supposed to be saying at that point and so like and then i'm just like i can't get it out of my fucking head i'm just singing i'm singing the crab song for moana what the and i've seen that movie i think about twice yeah but that's oh a good, my god that's a good part of the movie man Jermaine, yeah. dude, Jermaine. I mean, man, yeah, that it, it's the Rock being the Rock, and then the like the high school student girl and everything. Man, that movie is, yeah, all those movies are wonderful. I love them all. Um, all the princess movies, I bring them on. I've seen them a million times. They're great. Whatever. <laughs> Prin princess Mononoke. That's a different movie. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched that with my wife recently, and she'd never seen it. So good, though, if you like anime at all. Man, there was, like, uh, a thing going around. It's like, oh, where would you want to go? Would you want to go here in the world and there? And then, like, Korea. And I was like, man, it's before this show, that wouldn't have been a spot in, in even the back of my mind that I would have wanted to visit. And now, yeah. since doing Murder Moose and seeing all the backdrop of Korea, I want to go to Korea so badly now. Yeah, just to it's see. It's a beautiful. Like it's so beautiful, and then there's like the slums that are so slummy as well. Like they have yeah. all of it, and I would, I just want to see it all. It's just so interesting well, to me. 
Well, it's we're talking about uh, today, which was supposed to be a movie like three episodes ago uh, or two episodes ago. But uh, Josh being out, we uh, we're talking about Bong Joon Ho's uh, 2003 Memories of Murder, and he was the director of Parasite. And the the slums that they show in that movie mm-hmm. are just like yeah. like. The family that lives at the bottom of a basically it's a drainage pipe that they've built a fucking house in. It seems like, and it's just like, fuck. While while these people on the like at the top of the hill are just like living the good life, and it's like so close to each other. But it's like, yeah, it's man, it's how how uh, it's funny because I was watching I watched some videos about uh this movie today because I was like. Oh, I remembered the movie, well, but we I smoke. Yeah, I, we uh, smoke, and then we forget things. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and uh, it's so we're sitting there, and I'm like, I it's been a couple of weeks, and I just wanted because it's like it's not a short movie. No, it's, it's like a two and a half one. hours. But it's, yeah, it's essentially. I think you said it uh, when you were like, oh no, when you were like selling it to me, and all you had to say was Bong Joon Ho directed it. I would have been yeah. like, oh, like what? Huh? Like I haven't seen this yeah. yet. Like let's go. But you said yeah. it was. Like the uh, Koreans seven, and I was like, yeah, it's what it kind of looks yeah. like, yeah, and, and totally yeah. vibe all the way through. Like, did this come out uh, after seven? I, I would assume it did. Yeah, seven is ninety seven. Okay, seven. so I I can see yeah. a lot of influence, especially like the ending being so satisfying yeah. for me, and probably not satisfying for most audiences. I don't know. I love yeah. when it's just not the Hollywood ending that you want it oh. to be and it's just I love you know what and I learned today because this movie is kind of like um um the Z- zodiac yes this movie is a based on a real crime a series of crimes in uh, South Korea in awesome. 83 where the or 88 whatever it was that oh, the movie took place okay i'll just read the so 86, uh, synopsis yeah. in yeah. a small Go korean ahead. province in 1986 two detectives struggle with the case of multiple young women being found raped and murdered by an unknown culprit. Yeah, so I watching these a couple of videos that were talking about the, the just overviewing the movie, so remembering details. And yeah, this is a real case, and um, the ending of the movie was we'll talk about it, but it was it was really interesting to see like what people had said and you know come up with these assumptions of what was happening at the very end of the movie and but then because uh bong joon ho directed and wrote it his collaborator in everything kang ho song was the yeah. lead in this and he is so good in every like you can just see uh it's the type of collaboration like quentin tarantino has his go-to's and now yeah. um ryan gosling and uh damien chazelle did La La Land and then his follow up. Yeah. You, you see like directors pick their people and it's like you and I are now collaborators together. Yeah. And like, yeah. this is just like, the host was amazing. I just knew this was going to be amazing. And like, yeah, he plays a detective, Detective Park uh, Duman, who literally, he has like a jump to conclusions board at every... <laughs> <laughs> Like, he brings it along with him. He's just like, yeah. okay, here's the jump to conclusions board. And then he's yeah. got his uh, his right-hand man that has, like, a heavy trigger foot because he jump kicks everyone <laughs> on demand. Just boom, <laughs> like, over the shoulders, like, him, get him, boom. Like, how do you get a guy that, like, has an itchy trigger foot? Like, he wanted to kick everyone in the face. And he was pissed he off when he couldn't. It was amazing. Yep. Like, best character Dude. ever. The, the, his character is like I was on one of these videos is like we're gonna call him Foot or something like that because he's literally he's like he's like WWE drop kicking motherfuckers like in a field. Time. It's just like no that guy and yeah. it's just like no that was the wrong guy that guy so, and then he kicks a different guy. Well, the other the main uh, detective also he he also drop kicked someone right because he drop kicked the uh, he drop kicked the new the third detective like yeah. the big city detective. Um, I just I love how it was like it didn't look choreographed. It was one take. It was real. <laughs> yeah. And it was. Yeah. Like, yeah. A, a, it looked like very visceral and like not uh, pretty at all. It was just like. Yeah. Stumbling yeah. around and like punching and <laughs> kicking. And, like it looked real. And like that's it's... what I loved about it. 
it's so funny because my wife and I have been uh, watching uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and uh, our favorite game is because the show's like tw- over twenty years old at this point. Like where we're at, is is uh, w- our favorite game is to play. Oh, hey, there's the stunt double and all the fights because they're like you could because you're you're yeah. watching the show yeah. originally like, like these old four by three TVs. <laughs> now we're watching it <laughs> seventy inches and in, in, like super HD, and it's like you like you have. Uh, Buffy there, and then the, she's next replaced by a six foot three dude who was on steroids, and you can see his Adam's apple, but like because of the because <laughs> the technology, and yeah, these these like it looks like these guys, the actors are just they were they were going for it, man. They were like, okay, I'm gonna drop kick you now, and uh, they weren't fucking around, man. And it's it's funny because one of the guys I uh, that the video he was talking about the movie he goes. I swear to God, this guy's, uh, he was like, he's like, this haircut was inspired by Bruce Lee. Cause like, oh, then yeah, you think yeah. about it. Totally. Well, and it's like, and his outfit too, most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this is, it was, it was super interesting to see. And, uh, they actually ended up, um, uh, I'll talk about it later, but like, oh, and then fuck it. This movie is almost 20 years old and it's hard to talk about. It, so we're just talking about it. Um, so, at the end of this movie, if you haven't seen it, this movie's awesome. Memories of Murder, 2003. But uh, when this movie came out, <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, it was. So when it came out in 2003, the movie, uh, the case is unsolved. So that was like the ending when the detective, when he's not even a detective anymore, goes back to the thing. And I love That's that. Supposed to be- That's the ending. He, he's so yeah. fed up with it that he has to just shed himself of it. He just yeah. can't take it anymore. Yeah. And he quits. Yeah. Like, well, I wonder how much of it, because I think he, it's funny because the, the characters are all through these weird transformations throughout this movie. Like that guy is like this, he calls himself the shaman, right? He's like, oh, I can tell, man. I know what a motherfucker is like guilty. And yeah, it, but the, this movie, it's, like, honestly, I, again, I always think uh, a movie in its editing form, like they could have knocked off uh, at least like 25 30 minutes of just like weird long takes of stuff that didn't need to be there there was a lot of yeah. like amazing cinematography that was tacked on yeah. to this like that was on top that just it, it added to the aesthetic of the movie and was totally not needed to bring the story yeah. or progress anything along and it was just yeah. going for like award style cinematography because it was yeah it was there and they had it so like there was parts where i was just like that had nothing to do with anything but i loved every second of it because holy yeah. shit that looked like fantastic some of the yeah, scenes though it's... where he was just kind of stumbling around towards the third act that's where i was like this is too long like it's getting to that point yeah. where it's too long but then it brought it back around at the e- very very end where you're just like Oh yeah. my god, and I was so satisfied with it ending yeah. the way it did. Yeah. Let's I I always know once we have these like kind of downer type endings, you're you're down with it because like it's again, it's so much rarer in like a Maybe it's because I'm depressed. I don't like, know. <laughs> no. I mean I'm just kidding. Well, I mean, I'm totally kidding. I'm bringing it back I, around but, and joking about my <laughs> fucking I know, disorder I know, or whatever. I know, I know. <laughs> But no, it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it just it's it's not common, and it's just when you have every single movie has that, that like happy ending. It's just it. I've seen it doesn't it feel earned. Times, and that's yeah, why yeah, when exactly. those movies yeah. come out, like The Mist, and like you know that is just like it's ugh, yeah. it's like a sludgy yeah. ending. But it stands well, out. It's on a list now. Those movies yeah. don't come around very often and that's why they stand out to me because yeah. I, don't, I don't know I, I'm a punk kid that's just like fuck the norm right so I go yeah. like against the grain as often as possible yeah well dude it's it's yeah that's why I think of movies I think of like things like the descents where like I love they that fucking movie, cu- dude it is yeah, so metal it's, it's, it's metal as shit like but you know there's two endings right and like the U.S. ending is the cutoff ending, where it's it's like they ha- give you that jump scare at the very end. That's a wicked and then they monster cut it. movie, man. Like that is just like yeah, like yeah. Th- those are real monsters, and it's yeah. all in the dark. Yeah. It was it's almost like 
Blair Witch style, like it came out in like no one had really done a movie fully in the dark like that to yeah. that level of like full yeah. scare and like I don't know. Like it's, it was just really, really well done. It's kinda like they took like they took alien aliens and then they like they tried to like bring it down to earth right like because it's that same claustrophobic man, i haven't seen that you're movie being so out- long i saw that in theaters and man yeah i have it somewhere i don't know like i would yeah. love to rewatch that one for sure yeah just i mean that movie is metal that he he did two awesome awesome movies to start off his career with uh dog soldiers and then that i think was his second movie dog soldiers um, fuck that movie okay being a kid, okay, I just we just watched this documentary, The Last Blockbuster, on Netflix, and like I'm obsessed yeah. with Blockbuster. Like half of my collection is from the like previously viewed, and I still has yeah. the like Blockbuster stickers on it and stuff. Yeah, and, I, and it makes me love my collection even more because it's just riddled with Blockbuster yeah. all over it. Yeah. I miss it so much, and that mo- I still remember the cover of that because I was so afraid of wolves when i was a kid i don't know what ha- yeah. like i think i had a run in with a big dog or something so like big dogs and wolves just like terrified me when i was a kid so that yeah. like walking past that cover when i was a kid in the movie store would t- would just like i would i would have to look at the back and see the huge werewolf thing on the back and it would scare the yeah. shit out of me and i would have to throw <laughs> the movie down and run away but i would look at it every time because yeah. i'm just like i was yeah. a sick twisted horror fanatic even when i was a kid right oh dude it's yeah it's man i i kind of feel bad like i know i know renting movies and watching movies now is so much easier because you're just sitting there you go like you're sitting on your couch like i miss it so much dude i miss it yeah so much. but Going into the video store is an experience visceral, that if you like, never got to experience. I stopped yeah. collecting because there's nowhere to go to, like, I would have to go to, Wa- you know, I don't want to go to Walmart and, like, I don't know, man. Like, I want to go to a movie store and, like, yeah. they knew my name. Oh, hey, man, how's it going? Oh, you're just doing previously today? Awesome, yeah. dude. Let me know if you need anything, right? Like, but it was like, no problem, Brad. And then I would go and, like. I'd be in there for an hour and the smell yeah. and it was just like, it, it's the same thing and why, and I miss it so much because of COVID and everything, but like it going to the movie theaters, it's not just going to see a, a movie. It's everything accumulative. Yeah. You're going to the theater, yeah. like the smell, the people are there, the escalator, yeah. like going up or whatever. Like it's all this, like this experience. Right. And then the popcorn, yeah. extra butter, like it's it, all these things are like you, now I'm painting a picture for you and the smells and like reacting with a crowd like to something super yeah. scary and someone in the far right corner goes ah to something that doesn't really scare you but it makes it scarier because she screamed boom like yeah. 10 times better experience because yeah. I'm so desensitized and I laugh at like gore and stuff so that's like a weird yeah. experience for someone else to hear me laughing at something that they're just so terrified about like it's just that's yeah. what i do right like i don't know yeah i miss it man oh, dude it's i say all the time and you go back and i'll bring them up weekly i guess at this point but paranormal activities trailers where oh. they're just showing people dude, like i got freaking the you, fuck out uh, me and my friends did a parody of that uh like when they first came out called normal activity but, yeah. i gotta show you that it's like super <laughs> super old obviously yeah but. Definitely, definitely, yeah, but uh, yes, yeah. So they, though that was, I I totally get what you're getting at. Like, such a good ploy, and that's made me want to see the movie even more than I, we were gonna yep. see it anyways. But like, come on, man, yep. that's just good advertising. Yep. yep, man. Um, so this movie is it's it's really interesting because especially after you find out the like, <laughs> it's so uncommon to like have a movie like this where it's uh the what was it the jared leto denzel washington movie that just came out um the little things or whatever it was on hbo max or whatever it was called um had a kind of similar like kind of feel to it just wasn't that movie wasn't executed nearly as well (laughs) as this because again at the south korean cinema but uh it had that that feel, and it the ending kind of had that like. That movie had that kind of ending where it was like, 
never confirmed that like you know the killer was or, or who that he had suspected in the movie and all this um and it was kind of like this movie where it's like you you make it think watching it through at the end there that they've caught this dude who they like it's they what they, they suspect like like three people or four people during the movie of of these crimes right that's and why I said the jump. The first, like, it was so funny yeah. the, of opening. It's yeah. just like, it's this guy. No, wait, it's <laughs> this guy. Oh, fuck. We've, and yeah. they're, like, celebrating and getting pictures <laughs> on the fucking stairs. Yeah. And it's, like, yeah. the huge, like, sexist thing. Like, go get us a fucking beer. Like, I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Like, what is this? Like, this is crazy. Yeah. Like, well, it's, but then it's the 1986, like, right? So it's really yeah. painting a picture of, yeah. like, how. The it, times. It, yeah. yeah. And, I guess, I guess, uh. Korea, South Korea in 1986 was kind of a mess. And that was like, this was the first like known serial killer in South Korea, right? And so, like, that was a big thing. So, like, the country's going through, I mean, it's like, like, crimes that happen now in here that we can't, you know, we don't have, they didn't have 24 hour news shit to just like jump from conclusion. They just like focus on this forever, you know? Uh, yeah. Um, with the whole scene where they're like, we're going to have to send it away to the U S and it's going to take like 14 days. And they're like sitting there waiting by the phone. And the whole case <laughs> is literally w like hinging on this thing coming yeah. back from the U S I was like, man, that would well, suck so bad. And the best part about that is, is they're waiting for the DNA to come back for this guy. Like the, the, he ends up being like the main suspect in, in like the end. Uh, they're, they're like, the guy is like literally beating the shit out of this dude if he's not like ready to shoot him because it's he's it, upside it's like, down. He's hanging yeah. and it's been like three days in the dark of this guy drop kicking him in the fucking head. Like, tell yeah. us it's you. I it is me. It was totally me. Just stop kicking well, me in the face, please. Like, yeah. Well, they, dude, they they just they he's be, be about to be like. It's funny because like all these cops go through this weird like cycle of like it just shows what like extended periods of stress and like being frustrated like frustration because like it's like you have this two bumbling uh bumbling no middle of nowhere cops who don't know they don't have any idea how to solve a crime right because they're there's no one there there's like they didn't know what this murder was and uh so, and you have, I just so yeah, love so you have how these... every time there's a new murder, it's such a mess that the first guy can't get anyone to stop going over the footprints and the <laughs> yeah. like. Stop! This is a fucking crime! Just stop! Like yelling, I'm like, what is this? Like it, this is <laughs> crazy. The one guy like rolls down the hill at the like the one of the first or second that, crime scene. That, that's what and I'm it's talking like, about the the sloppiness of the scene. But it's not at all. Yeah. It's, it had to be yeah. like more choreographed and stuff. But like the stumbliness added to yeah. just the yeah. It, the, it was it was. It's just, you feel very like this whole time you're like this this murder per the this person committing the crimes is so like is capable enough that these guys are never going to get their shit together to like do that. I mean, and again, he's this, probably took, there in the crowd the entire time yeah. laughing yeah. too, because yeah. they have no it idea. It took him 30 years more to catch this guy in real life. So it just, it shows you like, it's like, dude, it's, well, I, I don't is know. Is there like a lot, a lot of people too, right? Like, I don't know, but the technology I mean, has to have like caught up now, obviously. Right. So, yeah. I mean, again, yeah, the they had to ship away to America, and it, it's, South Korea is a first world country. They're not like poor. They they that's showing you how like primitive that technology. Because like the test is inconclusive, right? <laughs> like it's inconclusive, and it's like I well, I mean, I just love how that that's I think my favorite part of the movie because it's like the slump. And then that's when it all falls apart because they're all hinging and then they hate each other and they're fighting yeah. and stuff. Like yeah. it's, it, this is just such a good movie, man. Like the yeah. score oh, dude, too, it's, like just brings oh, dude, it's, it yeah. to a whole new level, of course. But it, he, what was this? I, I, I just, I'm checking quickly to see, this was like one of his first movies, I would assume. Um, 
Uh, yeah, Bong Joon Ho. Uh, I think that, it was Motel Cactus. What's that? Okay, well, he did a couple other. Yeah, I've never heard of. I mean, Barking Dogs. It sounds just like a Korean. And movie. then some says, other shorts and stuff. So like, yeah. Wow. He's yeah. So this is He's his yeah, so second. The, move. Yeah. I can't say enough amazing things about the host. Like that is just. Yeah. Yeah, that movie is way more of a. I mean, I've I called it on here before. It's it, it's Jaw. Like this is South Korean Jaws. That's how good that movie is, and uh, it's pretty inspiring and i think that was the movie that got a lot of people's attention with him and i uh that was the first movie i ever saw in theaters uh of his because of the cool like art house theaters that i have in calgary that bring yeah every awesome cool horror movie like i just want to go to the movies (laughs) everything's fucking closed again man we're on lockdown yeah well dude i got uh so i got my uh shot on saturday my first oh. pfizer shot how did it feel man and how are you doing i because i've heard I people missed... get, get sick and stuff like a few people i, I got sick yeah i didn't feel good on sa- a sunday and then i i didn't work on monday because i was oh, i damn. was i was fucking wrecked so hopefully shot two wasn't someone said they they wondered if because i got sick back in like december remember and like or late november and so that that because of that, like in being that close to the having it, might have been like a reaction. Really? I don't know. No way. Yeah, it's I don't scary know. stuff, like, I, man. Like we don't know how, because yeah. like it's a brand new whatever. We don't know how. Yeah, it's we don't know. Like there's no no testing for like how the longevity of these things we're injecting too, right? Like it's it yeah. is a scary thought, but it's it's all horrifying because like. Uh, the the Johnson Johnson one that they're stopping here was like it caused six people had got like developed blood clots out of like seven million. So it's it's like one out of it's over it, it, over the a Pfizer million. One was like way bigger gap than that, and yeah, there was more yeah. cases of blood clots, but there was way more people that got poked yeah. by that one. So yeah, who knows? Yeah. It's all it's all horrifying. Yeah, um but uh the <laughs> It's all we're, a horror movie. We're, jump- we're living a yeah. horror movie right now. We are we are. It's it's a it's a tragedy. It's a nightmare. I mean I I think real life is always more horrifying than and again, that's another thing that's like it's funny. I was thinking about this while we were talking about this and in like the ending of this movie and I, I went in not knowing what it was gonna be, but like I think of bring up uh zodiac again is is it funny you watch a movie like zodiac and you're sitting there like rooting the whole time for them to catch him even though you know they don't ever catch him it's kind of it's, it's so like that long though like i love that movie yeah. and i love the cinematography it was like the that like follow weird like uh third person view of the car thing that he does like everything that yeah. he chooses to do yeah. with the camera is just amazing but like it's so long. I ha- I'm not a huge <laughs> fan of very long movies, and that one is like yeah. the pace is yeah low it's, it's a, too. Like it's a long dude. Again, we we talk about it. This movie does. I think this movie is better than Zodiac. Oh like, yeah, it, it, and it does it in two and a half hours instead of like three. I mean, and it's still long. I mean, you, you, Josh, when you get over ninety minutes with Josh, Josh is like starts like. It's like a toddler who's like swallowed like three no, cartons because, of like, like n- nerds not, or something not true like that. Because I watched <laughs> the Snyder Cut and I, I loved it. It was four hours yeah. and I loved it because yeah. I knew what he was attempting to do and he did it because he took all the time in the world to do it. But he did it and he he was yeah. shutting. I know what he was doing. He was shutting absolutely everyone up. And he did it because it was four hours long. Yeah. He hashed out all the characters that needed to be hashed out. And he appeased every single person, I think, with what he did. And yeah. what, like, it was still four hours, but I did like it. So, like, it's, it, <laughs> yeah. for me, I start to get angry after the 90 minute mark 
if they are just taking long to take long because I start to see Damn. through shit at that point. It's just like, okay, yeah. this is this at this point, the third act should be either starting or you know, the second act should be wrapping up, something like yeah. that. If you're just taking a lot longer to get to that fact, then I'm just gonna be like, fuck you. <laughs> like, hurry the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you're not earning it, right? Yeah. Like it's I it's yeah. I, I will never remember, like, not remember uh, going to see the Thin Red Line in the theaters with my dad when <laughs> I was a kid. Everyone always and, talks like, about the Thin Red Line. Yeah, Fuck. yeah, and that movie, and it's, like, it's, you're talking about, it's exactly, it's just long shots of the sky. And, yeah, like, like well, first person naked, shot naked, first, and then it goes, whoa, look at it, yeah. whoa, it's the sky. That, and, like, naked it's islanders like, running around the whole time. It's, I like, a National it's Geographic like the movie. was like, whoa, you can go handheld? Do it. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Do it. Oh, uh, no. Um, but, yeah, like, it, it's it. It's so funny. It, it's a – this it watching these characters in this movie, like, the uh, – these two cops who basically you go – while you're watching them just beat the shit out of dudes, like, especially at the beginning before the big city cop comes. Well, before he gets uh, a con- conscience – like it, he grows yeah. a conscience. He had like, and that's what I love about his movies because his characters always have big arcs, and you get to see yeah. those arcs. He is a fucking yeah. idiot at the beginning of this movie, like the dumb, yeah. the dumb cop thing. Like the dumb cop thing yeah. comes up so many times in this yeah. show. <laughs> like almost every movie we watch has a, a stupid policeman of some sort, or just yep, yeah. So like that cliche comes into play huge in this movie at the beginning and then he starts to realize because someone else comes in and is the voice of reason and goes no you gotta slow down and actually be a detective and not use that yeah. stupid mat from office space that you bought <laughs> officespace.com i know it's a good mat dude but you don't need to use it on every <laughs> jump to- it's the best what? Uh, that came yeah. with i think the the special edition of like i and i almost bought it and it like yeah. t- special order just because of the jump to conclusions matt came with it yeah Man, i wish yeah. I, had, I wish i had that in my house <laughs> <laughs> well it's, it's so funny because yeah the, you, that guy changes but and then the big city cop is like so frustrated and like angry at the end of this movie that he's resorting to the tactics of yeah. the little moron small town cop he's like threatening and using violence and like they both like, they both have they're both at one point on opposite sides of the spectrum and then at one point they meet in the middle and then towards yeah. the end of the movie they completely do an x and yeah. like pass yeah. one another one quits and the other is completely down in the drains like it, it, it's it's it, funny it's such an interesting watch yeah because well yeah well that and then then you have your third cop uh kicky mckickinson yeah. who who loses his leg because <laughs> Is the moron sacrifice like yeah? Or, uh, oh, this this more is karma, it? I guess. He, no, it's totally yeah. karma because they were yeah. they were torturing like everybody. Yeah, <laughs> to get their think, way. <laughs> That's not police I think, work. I think my favorite part of that whole movie is uh, the, like the like I laughed at was uh, the one guy was like hanging upside down <laughs> and the city cops like walking out and he's like, "Did you do it?" He's like, "Yes, I did it." And they because they've been beating the shit out of him and he's like, "No, you didn't, you moron or whatever." Yeah. He's, like, he's like, he's just like laughing at this motherfucker because he's like, "You're too fucking stupid." All these guys are too stupid. It's like, and it's just that like. Trying to trying to get that conviction, trying to get that you know, yeah. Trying to get I that love star how up. it was down some cement stairs in like a dark, like yes. completely <laughs> dark room, and so, like that it, added so much to the like the aesthetic of what yeah. they were doing too, right? With their with their table that you know <laughs> not all four feet are touching yeah. the ground at the same time, you're like, oh fuck, man! It just it feels like like. It feels like where I would go into my basement when I was a kid where it's like, you know, it's kind of a scary place when you're a kid. Kind of, It's like that dark, dank uh, hole. And that's kind of where it felt like their interrogation room was. I was like, hey, uh, we can't do this like like up on the main floor because there's too many windows. So we're going to drag him down here so we can 
pin this guy up like a pinata and <laughs> beat the shit out of him. <laughs> Which is, it's funny because like even with all that, like they don't show all that much violence like to any of these guys. They, it's mostly like the drop kicks and then like you kind of start seeing it and then it's like the aftermath where the guys are all like had the shit kicked out of them, out of them and whatnot, you know. But now that so. Parasite has won Best Picture and he's Oscar winner, uh, Bong Joon Ho, like, what do you think? I want to see him do another horror movie. You think, like, yeah. And, and I love now that Hollywood or just America in general has like f- accepted Korea as like, yeah, like, not just the foreign movie it's best picture now like and it's yeah. it's in there and i love that and the only one that's the only one it's it's a thing it like think about that we've had best pictures for like over 80 years yeah it's but this and, is i'm glad that there is and, that w- final inclusion yeah. it should happen 10 this, times look at this movie yeah. why the fuck was in yeah. this movie like 2003 like Nominated, open yeah. your eyes people like these are yeah i, I mean it's stuff like it well, this stuff one like o- this one three. Wait, no, he's won three Oscar. Okay, never mind. I'm on the different. They're picture. all best. I mean, yeah. best like you know, f- best foreign picture and okay. shit like that. But I think what you're saying is like, it's uh, th- like, Parasite's the only foreign picture that's ever won best picture. It, yes, like I know. usually, usually it's like you have like a GI Joe and a Barbie, and like the GI Joe and like. Like it's like a little kid where like, oh no, you guys can't touch each other because you're not from the same universe. But like, and then like, but now they're just like, nah, ba 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 ba. But like, it's it's Barbie kicks Ken's ass and wins a best picture for a, a foreign film, and it just shows you how. But after how I good saw Parasite that, man, is. like, because that came out I think early 2019, and it was on. I, when was that? I don't know. Like, because I'm always really well. Calgary Underground Film Festivals uh, always happens in April, so it's happening like very soon here. So I'm always yeah. like very obsessed with movies around this time of the year. And Parasite uh, was on the cuff list, and like uh, it then went on was on every other like yeah. festival list and stuff. And I saw it early in 2019 and was just like, man, I I don't normally like make people watch foreign films like i'll be like oh yeah this is a cool one and they're just like yeah you're a fucking a movie <laughs> guy right like whatever right <laughs> but like this one yeah. i was like yelling like no you have to see this like i can't stop thinking about this movie like it yeah. just it is it incepted my mind it's been weeks and it's just the best thing i've ever fucking seen like yeah. not joking well, and then then people started listening <laughs> Yeah, I mean, well, think about it, man. How every movie that wins Best Picture is usually like coming out in November, December, January. Like it's they're coming out right when the Academy is like you know voting on shit, right? Because they want that they want to leave that like that like impression like yeah. right before they vote, right? Um, and that movie came out I think January, or February, like you said, and still, and it was foreign. And it, like it's all these things, and you go, and it's it still the, it, one it, best picture. It took a wave off of I think Sundance or something, and was just like, from yeah, there. yeah. It's I mean it. It's funny, man. I always approve of like or it's, canes. It's kind or of that cans, canes, yeah, McCain's cans. cake. You know, McCain. <laughs> it it reminds me of a. Uh, I don't even know where I was going with that. <laughs> the McCain's cake thing lost. <laughs> Oh shit! Yeah, it, it's just, it's, it, it's always good. To, it's like Steven Spielberg. That's what I was gonna say. It reminds me <laughs> of Steven Spielberg, where it's like, the the this really really awesome director doing like crazier out those out there things early, and then like now like he's just winning yeah. best. Yeah, because I mean, Jaws is a crazy like for a horror movie right because it's like so good but i don't even think most people think about jaws as a jaws like a horror movie just, even though it is it, it it's one of those weird things like ghostbusters if you actually watch the first yeah. ghostbusters it's scarier than most other horror movies like uh, 
in yeah. any direction for years, like on either side. But it's a comedy, and it's done so well, yeah. and it's franchisable, and blah blah. blah. It just yeah. it was all this package. It transcended, and it's pop yeah. culture now. Same thing happened with Jaws. Same thing with, Jaws was a yeah. horror movie, but it was so huge and it transcended so much in the box office way. It became pop culture. So then it's just yeah. pop. It's not, yeah. it's more PG because it's so accepted that it became PG, right? Like it's, yeah. if it was yeah. R, but because it's so widely accepted, it's like, oh no, this is just PG essentially, right? It's a, yeah, Gremlins is a lot like that too. Mm-hmm. The, like the, it's, the first Gremlins movie, it has some really horrifying crap in it. But like it I, holds up because it's all like, practical stuff dude, too, right? Like yeah, other than yeah, the, when they yeah. add in the like laser effects of the 80s to like add effects. Yeah. It's like, oh man, if you just didn't do that dude, and kept the sparks dude, that you kept in real life and like all the puppets and everything, it looks awesome. The goo and... Me and, me and Brian were talking about, you You should, you would say you haven't seen The Howling. Uh, we talked about it last week. You should watch it because that movie has the scene where the, the two werewolves are fucking by the campfire, <laughs> nice. and it turns into like it's like a it, like a cartoon kind of thing, and it's <laughs> it's th- the worst effect. Me and Brian both are like, holy <laughs> shit! And, that it's it is a horrifying thing. It's like it it's like like the Hobbit looking or you know like the old 70s hobbits kind of thing it's yeah um the cartoon hobbit movie from the 70s um yeah so man the uh, there's some twist the kind of dark stuff in this movie i mean it's about a guy raping women and killing them and going into even like the uh the the that last victim in the movie it was really young i mean like was she in, I think she was in eighth grader or something like that, right? Like, cause, or something, you know, like she was like 12 or 13, like whatever. Cause they went to the school at some point. Right. Yeah. And, uh, the cop was talking to the, her, this girl specifically. Um, oh, it's because of the, 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 the guy in the, uh, the guy who was like jerking off in the field or whatever. <laughs> it was like that, that, the the eighth grade girls or whatever um i just love how uh they they reference that thing um about the murderer coming back to the scene and they're like hiding the other guy's hiding on the other side and then that's what it like all comes down to at the very end of the movie where he goes back to the gutter like however many years later and the girl's like this is really weird coincidence because there was like a random dude that just came here like last week yeah. type thing, and he's just yeah. like, "What did he look like?" <laughs> it's just like, ah. So what did he look like? And she was like, "He's normal." So this is what I was talking about earlier. So the uh, the director was actually doing this thing because this movie came out in two thousand three, where he was like looking into the audience, trying to look at the person who had done this because he knew that this the guy would go see like. Uh. The movie because this is like but 15 that, years okay. before he's caught. That oh yeah, I guess so. so. I guess so. Yeah. Man. Wow. Yeah. I don't know why I didn't think of that. I was just like I didn't think of that either because I didn't know it was a true story, right? Like oh, that's the thing. Actually, like, yeah. yeah. I guess that's why I didn't yeah. think of that because you yeah, just yeah, told yeah. me it was a true story. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So um. <laughs> that's crazy that this is a true story, man. Like yeah, yeah that. What is, I gotta I. I it's, I gotta look up about the guy after this, okay. like after we record this and see about him. But like, I don't know much. I like I, all the videos I showed. Like, they just showed the guy with his like, like, like at the cops desk with like a hoodie over his head. So I didn't even see anything. So, uh, but I'm interested in figure out how they figured out it was him. But, um, he got an award winning movie made about him. So he's yeah. he's done something, dude. I uh. It, the one thing that was is is really frustrating during this movie that and not because of it's the characters, not the the movie, the how they they take these guys that, like the the guy that's a little like, the guy who's a little slow who who like, mm-hmm. w- like them blaming him was like, and I kind of understand because like the guy was like giving them details or like had been following the, the girl who d- had died around who was the victim. And, uh, and then he was like talking about the crime because you, you learn later on that he had actually witnessed it. And, but 
they were they were uh they fucked with this guy and then he ends up getting run over by this wow, train that man was so brutal and you're man. like like because you're like it, well again but but that's what makes this movie more inch well i guess that's a, the true story thing right so it's like they are yeah. all hinging and it's finally like it through editing too but like they finally get yeah. to this point and you know what i actually have to say that i love about this movie it is a detective movie it is a mystery movie but at no point did I ever feel like this was a CSI episode. And that is yeah. like the best thing I could ever say about a movie of this like crime drama mystery. Those are the three yeah. describers of this movie. And it did not once remind or feel like CSI. That is a huge thing because CSI has tainted crime drama yeah. mystery for me. For, and it's coming back apparently like good for it because it is what it is but like it is fucked movies because it's done yeah. it too well just like walking dead has kind of fucked a lot of zombie movies because it's now doing the zombie yeah. thing too fucking well right like yeah it's funny because uh <laughs> i've been uh streaming through all the resident evil games on my stream and uh i've, I've gotten through all the good ones and i'm i've to number six which is <laughs> i'd never played before and wow it's a disaster I to say about that one it's a I, real I real wonder bad about game. like franchises in games because it's like it's still the same like activision or whatever putting it out but like the developers yeah. or the people making the games you know change from title to title potentially yeah. and stuff <coughs> yeah and you think <clears throat> it's a franchise of like that size would kind of have more quality control you know like yeah it's like who is what's well, <laughs> well it's it's funny because you think about like think about back to the 80s where it was like the like think of the friday the 13th or nightmare on elm street movies they were all like you would like have someone make the movie and then like some second uh assistant director like down the line would like then make the next one and then they oh you were like the stunt guy for like this oh you could direct the third one and it's like they kind of did that with those that movies was the yeah. the gag director the the guy who was in uh the second director only in charge of like directing the gags cuts whatever yeah so whenever we go yeah. to like a gore scene or something that's like what greg yeah. nicotero would direct back in the day and stuff and then he became a yeah. real full-on director after because his gags were better than most of the direction of like the whole movie it's just like you go to the yeah. gags and it's like whoa and he <laughs> was he understood yeah. how to make it look really fucking gory or good and like so yeah. those are usually the the people that get the the job after the fact it's like oh that's the second unit director of just gags or something now you yeah you have the power you think about it, it's it's that good cinematographers are kind of doing a lot of like like visually a lot of the things that make directing so, you know, appealing to us, right? They're they're the ones showing us what we're seeing. They're setting up the cameras and where they're at and all that stuff. But that's where you get so a you're team. Like, like a, a director yeah. usually has the DP or like a, a cinematographer yeah. that they work with. It's like, oh no, you understand. Yeah. And it's it's a, usually a collaborative thing, anyways, right? So like, yeah. But what I'm saying is, it's is that that thing though. Like, yeah, they're working together, but guess who gets all the credit most of the yeah, time? Yeah, right? yeah. Director, we talk about sure. that. So like, so those guys go into that role, like they learn and go down the road. Um, I love them but, both. Yeah. Oh, I mean, definitely. But we sit here and we blabber on about cinematography and like Korean movies, like a couple times a month. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, um, we're we're not the normals ones here. Um, yeah, but I love it um, though. Like, yeah, I know. Me too. I I love you. Yeah. Like that's what. But yeah, I'm gonna talk about it anyways. And either my wife yeah, but... is gonna tune me out and go on TikTok when I say this stuff, or I can say it to you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, man. Yeah. So. Uh, the uh i also like kind of laughed after like it figured out what was happening with the the one guy who was like who worked at the like the rock factory or whatever and they caught him like you talked about the scene where they're all like waiting for the person to come back to the the scene of the crime and the dude who brought the bra and panty 
like out to the woods and starts jerking off. On yeah, like <laughs> talk about like, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Like it, it's an awkward ass situation regardless, but like, yeah, the fact that like absolutely every cop involved in the case is there <laughs> peeping on you yeah. doing this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's Talk about it, bad it, like, it's like, it also felt like a, it felt like a, like, like the three stooges in modern times kind of, they're the, like, but that's they're what all I'm like saying running about like the, the clumsiness yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Total yeah. three stooges because it, it wasn't sped up, but it was like so clumsy, like them falling down the hill into the crime scenes yeah. and stuff. Like it, it felt yeah. three stooges for sure. It It's that thing, man. Like you think about it, that shit gives you like that, like, kind of that sense of authenticity right because it's like you're like shit man if i was in this situation i would have been falling over too and like like then like but i stepping uh, yeah, on a I stick i appreciated it, seeing that like yeah. it, it added yeah. something to it for me yeah yeah uh so that's the like then they chase him and then the only way they it's funny because the only way they uh they nail this guy and like he's not the killer but they he was wearing these red panties like when he's coming to jerk off in the field. I'm like, this guy is really into underwear because he's jerking off on a bra and panties, and then like and he's wearing them, wearing right? these <laughs> and he's wearing these like really like lacy red things. And I'm like, and they like see the red underwear sticking out of his his uh, <laughs> underwear. At the at, like, he pants went to at the factory to get away too. Man, that guy that guy's like. I need to come. I need to come now. <laughs> and he just like <laughs> runs away, like runs into he, the woods he, with his. Then he blends into the workers. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, he's like, you'll never find me. And they're, they're like fucking with these dudes because they know who it is because they saw the fucking red underwear on him. Like, why are you guys fucking with these other dudes? But, um, no, man. So he doesn't like, run away because he's there yeah. and he thinks he's not. Oh, I, I, they're foiled. Ha, ha. And they're like, mm, no, we're not foiled. <laughs> yeah. Even even uh, the shaman, shaman eyes uh, can catch you if he gets everything. Um, that And it's – that was like the second or third guy, third guy that they beat up and like they're trying to get him to convince. I think he was the one that the guy's like – they're like, did you do it? And he's like, yes, yes. And he's like, no, you didn't, you liar. Um and then we, uh, you talked about how they were treating women in this movie, and this is it's it's funny because like the biggest like the biggest piece of evidence that they they get the whole time this movie's going on really is besides the scene in which they send to America, which doesn't go anywhere, is they uh, the this woman cop figures out that every time a murder's happened, someone's like requested this certain song, um, and she's the one who told them about it, and and like. It ends up being like how they kind of get the uh, or start chasing the third act, like potential yeah. like perpetrator, right? But uh, not after and, like you know belittling her and saying it was a terrible idea, and then they use it anyways, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they treat that they do not, man. This is so like eighties like workplace shit. Like you people make jokes about it. this is like them going. Oh, like, it was bad. Yeah. Oh, you're just. You're just a lady. We're not gonna listen to you. Oh wait, that was good information. And it's, it's like, but that it, shot in the tunnel with the train tracks and the silhouettes. Oh, yeah, just still. Yeah, like, there's so many it's, like shots in this movie that are like almost burnt into my brain to like remember. Yeah, just because yeah. they they need to be remembered. Like it was just visually so well done. Yeah, and like fitting and yeah. it's just yeah that's this is why it stands above yeah well it reminds you know it kind of reminded me like the guy running down the tunnel it's like it's so like it's so real because it's not this guy just like running down the guy's like stumbling and running into the like you know tripping and falling over himself as he's trying to get away yeah. it kind of reminded me of like uh the very Quentin Tarantino was shot kind of right. Yeah. And this is way before like what I'm thinking of is inglorious bastards when the, the one chick gets away at the beginning and it's like, you know, like swerving and diving yeah. through the field, right. To get away from the Nazi dude. Um, 
and it's just it's that it's that it's that com- like the commitment to not being overly perfect like it's it's funny because i <sighs> South Korea just does stuff that's beautiful. Like they're not, they're not like playing like Metallica songs during the middle of a the movie. They're playing like, See, they're playing like you know or, like orchestra the, sets that. I don't know, man. Like the whole Suicide Squad thing comes out, and I'm just like, I don't know, man. Like it looks all right. It looks loud, and whatever. But it's just like I've seen that slow mo fuck. It's just like it's the exact same fucking. Bu- it, it, like it's gonna be better because it is James Gunn, and if they let him be James Gunn, there's gonna be some funny James Gunn isms in the movie that I'm gonna be like, yeah. hell yeah, he got to do that. Fuck, that's fun. Like I, mean, I, I and that's what I yeah. like about James Gunn movies. Like two thumbs up for me mm-hmm. because he got to be James Gunn for a bit. Cool, woohoo! You know, like I love I Slither. Mean, I love you know like, and he collaborates one hundred percent with his boy. And he's in every movie, and it's like I love that about James Gunn yeah. and his package. You know, like that's it's all the yeah. package. It's his boys and his, you know, and he's super funny in his writing. Yeah, but like, dude, it's have you seen the Suicide Squad? Like, tra- what the John Cena going off about eating a bit a beach full of dicks? dicks yeah, just uh, but that's, like, <laughs> that's totally like he's bringing his James Gunn yeah. isms to yeah. the. And yep. that's what's gonna make that movie fun. But like, dude, the the trailer itself with like the ACDC and like the it's like I, yeah. do something a little different. I, it doesn't get me dude. super pumped because I've seen that trailer package for sixteen yep. other movies, right? Yeah. Well, dude, it's it's what I'm saying. It's like it's that thing where you have these songs that are big and loud and and like you know. But dude, I I walk out of these South Korean movies and I'm just like remembering the violin it's that mm-hmm. small like intimate music that just leaves We're an on effect completely on me. different opposite ends of the spectrum with this movie and me referencing yeah. suicide squad but like yeah. uh no like this is yeah this is completely di- this is apples and oranges like this is a yeah drama yeah it's is yeah. is the main thing for this but yeah it but it is it and it was more making a like a statement like how the the scores of every movie South Korean movie we've done has just been like one of these things that just like stays with me in how beautiful it is and it's not like again it's I'm I'm not jamming like you know and like you know head banging to Metallica like I, just I said think, it, yeah well I I totally well I 100 percent agree with you but I think the reason yeah. uh, South korean movies or just korean movies in general can they they're it's it's just different like the hollywood or the north american like yeah yeah acceptance like it's yep. anything to do with nudity and blah blah, blah. it's just like suppress 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 cr- like yeah. anything to do with like violence and ultra violence just like bring it out guns what like that's the american way and like the stories that we've watched and the stories that have been told uh on this show for the korean movies have been stuff that don't get touched often and like oh but it makes you think more about the craft and they're not pussyfooting around shit they're telling the stories because it is still a story and it yeah. it can be art on top of very yeah. heavy subject matter yeah. that is very hard yeah. to talk about and very hard to yeah. showcase in a way. But if you do it with class and with yeah. like all these filmmakers understand the power they have as a filmmaker and the art that comes along with it. And it's it, I don't know, man, like like I've said before, those like it's like paint strokes with a like brush strokes with a paintbrush like they are true artists in korea with film and i feel like uh they get to express themselves a little bit more potentially over there without the suppression yeah it just doesn't feel like everything is like it's it's super rare for like people money makers to come in and yeah like you don't see studio type bullshit edits in yeah, korean yeah. movies like big yeah. budget hollywood movies that you can see when a 
uh, that doesn't look like the intention of the the writer director of this movie yeah. that like uh doctor sleep i can yeah. see that movie as two separate movies like i can yeah. see when all of a sudden executives came in and were like there's not enough ghosts there's not enough pizzazz like all and all there's of a sudden not, the third act of that movie yeah. just isn't the rest of the movie i was like what the fuck is this like you can see just throw money yeah. at this movie it's not interesting enough i'm like all right this movie that's sucks what now. i i i was i i said that about that movie the movie's not a horror movie it's like a thriller and then the, at the end of the thriller they go to the overlook hotel because it's called the shining it's like yeah it's yeah it's I was so very, overly yeah. disappointed in that movie. And like they got you and Mc, like wicked actors, like every and that's again, it had all the ingredients. What are you doing? Like you have so yeah. much money, you have s- such great actors and like filmmaker and it looked amazing too. Like and the lead actress yeah. too, like who played all amazing things yeah. and they just they shit the bed, man. Yep. Yep. I I, I like that movie. I, I won't lie, but like, yeah, I, I, I get what I you're saying. Liked it, I, I get, it, and yeah. then it just shit the bed for me. I did. I didn't love it though, which is a thing where it's like, uh, I've always liked The Shining, but The Shining isn't a movie I can watch. That movie, talk about long movies. That movie is two forty or two forty five, and is there are. It's not. It's just a slow burner, right? It's a. It's like a but real slow burner for a horror movie. For, for me, that is a weird. I don't know. Like I, I love the way Kubrick saw things behind a lens. Like, and w- there's not very many like behind the scenes. Like I'm a huge Kubrick fan because of yeah. the way. Well, the way he says fuck the rules when he wants as well like he creates rules and he's super like one point perspective but then he'll like break rules and like make his own rules sometimes and like i don't know i i love so many things that he did with that movie i can just throw it on in the background and yeah i like to just like i don't know like when you watch that movie and you like people have super deep dived in, like that oh, yeah. documentary yeah where, like half of that documentary I'm like, hell yeah, yeah i totally see eye to eye with you on these uh opinions and then like the last half of that movie it's just like guys you went deep into the, like <laughs> what you lost me like you guys are all yeah. <laughs> uh th- yeah. that's a stretch and a half uh if i've ever heard one but i don't know yeah. i i totally get obsessions because he he did you know die young rock star thing right Yep. Yep. Exactly. Um. So, like, the whole third act of this movie is probably the most intense, like, of the whole thing, right? Because it it gets through the like the one prime suspect who like who comes off he comes off as kind of a like a sociopath, like the guy like he's doesn't care that the cops are messing with him because he doesn't like he has that like attitude that like either a he's he's innocent or B he's a cocky asshole who, who doesn't care yeah. that like these guys are chasing him because he knows he's smarter than them. Um, which leads to all the, like them, like <laughs> the layering of this movie the, though, like the, each character, yeah. it's like a yep. terror. What is that? Tiramisu? I don't fucking know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But, like, well, you know, layered. Cake. Well, what? Yeah. Well, it's, it's so like, we talked about the city cop who had like, who was like you know the smart you know like logical one who, who in this third act like actually breaks because he's watching this guy like at work or or at, like a, he's at a restaurant I forget what exactly what it was but he's watching this guy and he falls asleep in his car, and this guy like wanders off while he's sleeping, and while he's wanders off the 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 eighth grader that he had met earlier gets raped and murdered and it is like it's the subtlety of how like because you don't see, they're not showing faces of these people they're like the, they don't show much of bodies or anything like that but no, this girl it's a very had, subtle like, like it, it's not in yeah. your face with the the violence yeah. or, with, like the, the yeah. subject matter is bad enough and that's yeah. what the the 
the the horror yeah. is of this movie because yeah. it's it's not yeah. really a horror movie it is a crime drama mystery and yep. like i i'd say like 7 is more horrific because it actually shows what happened more and this shows like it's but, it's it's elegant in its but that's yeah. But the the thing with that is, is seven is an, out of the imagination, and this is real. Yeah. <laughs> so you go, what's more, what's more horrifying? But the girl had like had a band aid on her. Well, I her didn't side know it was real that, at the like, time. It's just like you, man. So like, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, things, right? well, you're comparing it, it, it is a pure cinema thing, and I'm just thinking out loud. It's like, man, when, once once you know that, because I didn't know that either. Um, oh, uh, they but, yeah, updated so, the poster. Okay. So it's on Neon now. So this is the new poster because it says from Bong Joon-ho, a Academy Award winning director of Parasite. Yeah, yeah. So they're yeah. they're getting his catalog out, to, uh, which I am so super happy I saw this and probably wouldn't have if it wasn't done by Bong Joon-ho, right? Like, so I'm yeah. glad they're doing this because I hope more people see his catalog because it's fucking great. Yeah. Um, Snowpiercer was actually one of those movies that got Harvey Weinstein went and fucked real uh, bad. Like he was he, I, like I, the story he says when yeah he was like yeah and he wanted to do more cuts and like I lied about it being like my dad or my dad worked in yeah. a factory or something like yeah it makes me love him on so many different levels more than I loved him before yeah. because he he fought so hard for the. Like he knows yeah. what he's doing. Like fuck off, yeah. especially yeah. Harvey fucking Weinstein. But like fuck yeah, oh, off, executives <laughs> fucking with yeah. movies, especially with artists that are this fucking good at making them. Yeah. Like let them be. Yeah. I I was watching a uh, internet video about uh, this Cody Lee's channel guy I watch on YouTube. Sometimes he was he was doing like top five movie cuts he wanted to see, and number one on his list was. Uh, like horror sci-fi movies, and then number one was uh, Curse, Cursed, the the West Craven vampire mo- or a werewolf movie with Christina Ricci, and <laughs> oh yeah, and so like you, you Harvey Weinstein is why that movie is the way it is, and fucked it multiple times, and then like made him reshoot it once they were seventy percent through, what? and oh, he's just an and, asshole, yeah, and then like made him go to PG thirteen from like this this like it was a hardcore r like werewolf movie and it was like again is it just harvey it's the same thing you're talking about but like this guy he was positioning he wasn't making a movie he was saying we have a slot at this time that needs to be this rating and he didn't care what the movie was and he wasn't and that's the problem he was filling a slot in the time frame of a executive that he's like okay february we need a fucking movie Mm -hmm. and it needs to be pg-13 because the teenagers in february need you know like and that's all he was thinking and he's like okay well this movie fits uh the budget mark and i can swing my little dick around and say fuck you to you know like that that's what happened and yeah that is dude the worst thing that the snow are getting and i i think it, it's obviously getting you know kind of adjusted because people i mean tnt and their their snow piercer tv show and stuff like that it's another movie yeah. that just like is wonderful i think i haven't seen the I mean, tv show have you seen it no my wife watched some of it and she said she liked it a lot but so. he's um, he's involved with it is he not i think he has some like producer credit or something like okay. that if i looked at it um, but yeah, so I got to check it out. The, what is uh, it on? It's on TNT. I think it's what it's on. Oh yeah. TNT. Cool. Um, I still need to watch Okja, the, the Netflix movie with Same. The, like, genetically they modified. Jennifer uh, Connelly, man, hit. she doesn't age. She is like, yeah, she looks good for her age, man. She doesn't age um, at all. So we talked about the ending where the they 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 finally the guy breaks and then like uh almost kills this dude. I don't even know if he actually shot him when he was like shooting into the cave, but <laughs> um the so I guess after looking into this like th- the ending of this movie was like left a big like left a big uh mark on people. Um 
like I told you, it was the, the, the director, a lot of it. The, so basically the shaman cop from the whole movie, It's a, this goes from 86 to what, 2003, Three. I guess, yeah. or something? Uh, right like, when it came out. And, think, uh, right? Yeah. Uh, so the cop is no longer a cop. He's selling like juicers. <laughs> it seems like he's good at it. And it was funny because uh, one of the videos I saw pointed out he's wearing glasses now and his like whole thing was like how good his eyes were at the beginning of the movie and then he's wearing glasses. Yeah. Um, the the slide and, down to reality is what happened yeah, at yeah, the exactly. end. And like yeah. he, his job is a perfect like he's pushy. So he's a pushy salesman and he's really good at it because yeah. he's always been pushy. So now he's slid down to the reality of what he probably should have just been doing the entire yeah. time. Yep, exactly. Um, and the dude, the whole blast shot is beautiful, right? Because it's like that, like that super gold, golden, like, uh, like field. Golden and, hour. Uh, oh. Yeah. And the little girl who I, I still like, pretty sure just appeared out of nowhere i mean i know it's a movie but she appeared out of I, nowhere it seemed did. like <laughs> she, uh what are you so doing he, here? The guy, holy shit where'd you come from <laughs> he basically goes back to this this drain pipe that the first body was found in the these murders and uh i think because he was driving past and he saw and he's like fuck um and just to remember what happened with this case and then they never they never caught the guy um and he looks in this drain just to like, like, oh fuck, yeah, like there could be a body in here again, right? Yeah. And this little girl walks up and she's like, you know, a guy, a stranger came by, and he's like, oh, and she's like, yeah, he, he said he remembered doing something here, and he's like, what? Well, did you see his face? She's like, yeah. What do you look like? He was normal, and this is the whole like where he looks into the crowd and like looks into the camera. It's like very fourth wall breaking yeah. kind of like staring at the audience for a second. And so like the whole fact that they were doing that to like, like I, he's like looking into thought, the movie. Like, cause now knowing that it's a real movie and like if I, or not real movie, uh, a real story and everything, I would have probably recognized that seeing that. But for me not yeah. knowing it was a real story, I thought he was breaking the fourth wall and saying to himself that he realized that he's never going to find him anyways. So like, or something yeah. like that. I don't know. Like I thought yeah. it was like a yeah. self reflective moment for himself, not looking into the yeah. crowd, but like knowing that is like super yeah. power, like way more powerful now Yeah. because wow. Yeah. You think about it. Cause like all these guys are like, like at crime scenes, you think of the wailing that we watched a little while ago where like the, the, the devil guy is like showing up at the crime scenes and just watching. Right. Um, I think it's like a Korean thing. I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's the old, like that's the old, like arsonists are always in the crowd after they burn a building down kind of thing. Right. It's the whole, like they want to watch the cops show up or whatever. Well, maybe Um, not a Korean thing. Maybe it's just the, the Korean movies that we've been choosing. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so and it's yeah, that's basically the end. Like they never they hadn't caught the guy and they caught him fifteen years after this movie came out. So um yeah, it, this I'm movie is just caught a mass because everything that happens in this movie yeah. to the people is yeah, like it is horrific. It's it's fucked up. Yeah. And I think what happened from what I saw, the little information I saw was that they uh he got I think they f- like correlated he was in jail somewhere else in south korea for like something the else. same crime basically oh, really? and and then they like correlated that this guy like i don't know if he waited a while or something but he was like then they went oh this motherfucker okay that's who did this shit and i think he admitted to it oh. um, or something like that so okay i think he admitted to all of them like nine or eleven girls or something insane like that but like yeah it 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 was such a weird like there are things about this movie like in the crimes where like he would kill people and then like kill these late women and then put their underwear on their heads and it was like the most like shame like he'd bind like bind like bound them up like would tie them up with like their their hands behind their backs and feet and shit like that was like hogtied like Mm -hmm. and it was all very very like again hard to watch and i don't know if it makes it even harder to watch when you watch it knowing that this was like based on this real series of events, but I don't know. On Amazon Prime, yeah. it says "Memories of Murder" NC seventeen. What? No way. 
There's not even any, is there nudity in this movie? I don't even. Oh, maybe a, uh, I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, okay. What? Really? <laughs> oh, it's the hour 20 mark. We're done. Yes. Okay, Josh. Do you have a movie you want to watch next week? Any? Dude, what's your? Can, I okay because we have deep dove, deep dived. We dove into the. Or I came out of the deep dive, and we deep dove to two thousand three for Mur- uh, Memories of Murder. I've said so many times that I want you to see Pontypool. Let's fucking do it, man. Pontypool. Okay. Is the movie? It's like over ten years old now. So. Yeah, let's do it. Pontypool That's is the like, the radio radio station zombie movie, oh, right? I, I just and I've met him like just randomly. He's just like at Cuff and stuff, and I'm like their ten year anniversary was there, and I have like a cool. interview on my YouTube channel. Like this movie is just it's so randomly in my life, and it like I love it in so it's, many different ways because of the randomness that it came into my life, and it's so fucking yeah. good. And wow, can't wait to talk about it. Okay. And yeah, dude, dude, definitely. Yeah, yeah. It's it's one of those movies. It's been on the list. So it's cool. on the That's list. It. Ponty pool. Next More week. Canadian um, amazingness. We're a little behind on YouTube. I have the I have to put those videos up for the last t- couple episodes whatever, up man. on YouTube. But those will be up. So. Hey, I just okay, took everybody. two weeks off to be whatever. So whatever, man. I dude, I I lost my weekend to like being COVID sick with the vaccine. Dude, so. get better. Okay. Every, I, I'm better now. I'm back to normal. Well, so you sound I'm gonna good. go. S- yeah, I'm gonna go sleep and and uh, have a good one after this. So, okay, everybody, Pony Pool next week. Uh, our website, murdermoose.com. Uh, we are doing. Uh, I think it's all updated. We were up there. Uh, our Twitter is Moose Murder Pod on Twitter. Our our email is murdermoosepodcast at gmail dot com. If you want to send us an email, leave us a five star review if you want somewhere wherever you listen and uh thanks for listening you guys it means a lot to us so if you have any comments anything you want to say contact us somewhere yeah, and we'll listen like, i wish there was just like a uh, like a one place that i was just like hey come and talk to us a comment comment on this right here because <laughs> like yeah when when if we're like i don't know man like we're everywhere like, kind of like, like twitter but i, like, I want to yeah. talk to you guys i want to see the comments people come up and they're like hey i love the show it's just like, oh, which one did you listen to? I don't even know. <laughs> oh, I like the show. Yeah. Okay, cool, man. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> well, I appreciate yep. you liking the show, man. Yep. Yep. Me too, man. Me too. Okay, everybody. I love you, Josh. I'm glad to have you back, you sexy fuck. And we will see you guys next week. So have a good one, everyone. Bye. Love you. Bye.